Notch apples are one of the most powerful items in Minecraft. And they are very, very rare. But today, I'm going to build a machine that will let me farm unlimited notch apples in 1.20. And I'll also build a massive factory so that I can store them all. But in order to build this farm, I'm going to need a lot of leather, a lot of chickens, and a lot of squid. So for phase one, I'll create some much better farms for these to quickly get the items. Starting with hoglins. This is my current hoglin farm, which is great for getting all of the food that I need. But I must get 72,000 leather, and that's going to take way too long with this. So instead, I'm going to grab a load of obsidian, plant a bunch of pumpkins and begin building a portal based hoglin farm right about here. I'm starting by building the base of the farm which is going to cover this entire area and the way it works is there will be a load of nether portals stacked on top of each other. I also need to grab the few pumpkins that I have, carve them and turn them into jack-o-lanterns. And the reason that I need these is that jack-o-lanterns are a light source so they stop all mobs from spawning except hoglins. And they're also a solid block, so mobs can spawn on top, which wouldn't work with glowstone or sea lanterns. But unfortunately, I've only got nine of these, and to finish the project, I'm going to need 4,500. So that's the reason why I planted all of these, and I'm going to grab a bunch of bone meal so that I can grow the stems and get all of the pumpkins that I need. And I'm also going to properly repair this machine with hopper minecarts so that it properly collects them all up and puts them into this chest. And so whilst I wait until I can fill all five of these shulker boxes, I'm going to bone meal up the rest of these, gather up a bunch of wood, and let the machine gather the pumpkins. And now I have all of them, so I just need to carve them, craft the jack-o'-lanterns, gather up the other materials, and from there I can finish up the bottom layer. And with that done, I now need to repeat the same thing over and over again until the farm is absolutely massive. And whilst I build this, don't forget you can still get the SP77 beanies and signed Armor Trim's poster on sp77.store. And this side of the build is completely done. It is absolutely massive. And now I need to grab the materials to build the overworld side of the farm, which is thankfully <laughs> much, much smaller. And that is everything. It, it looks like quite a lot, but realistically, it's not too big of a build. So I think it'll all work out fine. Right about here is the spot that it needs to be. And I'm going to begin by placing down all of the chests and the hoppers. As you can imagine, it's a pretty big system to collect all of the leather that they drop. And I'm only going to collect some of the pork chops. Most of them I'm going to burn because I really don't need that much food. And this is just a nice, simple item sorter underneath this that the hoglins will fall into. And this part is pretty cool because it is like an item staircase. The hitbox of each block is slightly lower than the one next to it. And now that the redstone's in, I can show you why this works. So if I throw an item down there and trigger this tripwire hook, you can see that it pushes the item further and further down and eventually in, which in my opinion is very, very cool. And it means that I don't need water so the hoglins can die of fall damage. This is the lava so that I get cooked pork chops. And now I just need to build up this glass a little bit higher with two portals on top so that there's plenty of space for the hoglins. And it is done, which means it's now time for me to link up the portals. And doing that means lighting up every single one of these, which will require loads of flint and steel. So I've got a better idea. If I go to the bartering farm storage, I can use all of these fire charges that otherwise just, just probably wouldn't have a use. I'll also turn on the nether mob switch so that I don't have hoglins attacking me as I do this. Perfect, that's now all successfully done. And so now I can stand on this little AFK platform and I can get the 70,000 leather that I need. And that is going to be long enough. So I'll grab a load of shulker boxes and start filling them up with all of this leather. This right here is 38,000. And this is 73,000. Which means Operation Get All The Leather is complete. And it's now time for me to collect every single feather. To do this, I'm going to need loads of eggs and a load of redstone items. I now have everything required. And I'm now about to build what is probably the only portal-based chicken farm that, that anyone's ever made. And that is because the portal doesn't really make the farm any more efficient, but it does make it easier for me to get all the chickens into one place so that I can use the looting effect. So yeah, there is a slight method to the madness, even if it is a little bit of a minor one. I'm going to make a bit of a platform here in front of the portal, just so that I can add the redstone. You see, I'm going to put redstone next to all of these target blocks so that they activate all of these dispensers. And then I'll make a simple comparator clock, which works like this. All of them will constantly be turning on and off. But for that to work, this machine does need to be full to the brim of eggs, which means we're going to need a lot of storage and then a lot of chickens. You see, there's not going to be just one row of double chests. No, there's going to be 17. 
And then from up here, I need to load more hoppers with cauldrons on top. And these cauldrons are what are going to store the chickens inside. I put glass around the edges, otherwise the chickens will think they can jump out and I'll just cause more lag, which I don't really want. And finally, I need loads of dispensers facing downwards into the cauldrons. From here, I'm going to use all the eggs that I have to fill as many of the dispensers as I can, activated by observers to create all of the chickens. Now, I still need loads of eggs to fill up everything else. I've only done this first row, but I don't have anywhere near enough. So I'll have to wait for these guys to grow up and lay me a load more eggs. And then I'll be able to gather them from these dispensers. In total, I need 8,640 eggs. And in total, I've got 360 chickens. They get about 800 eggs per day. So I should have all the eggs I need to fill the farm in 11 days. And the third item that I'm going to need, along with feathers and leather, is ink sacks. So whilst those chickens are at spawn doing the laying, I can be here. Farming the squid. And I should probably also expand this storage because it, it, it is kind of filling up a bit too fast. And that can be done by building a simple item sorter that connects to a shulker box loader. And from here, I've just got to load this up with a few shulker boxes. And it's fully functional, but it doesn't look very nice. So I'll gather up a load of warped wart blocks and make it all look a lot better. And in the meantime, the chickens have been busy laying quite a few eggs, which means I can stock up the next row of droppers to get at least a few more chickens. I'll be back later to add in even more chickens. And in the meantime, I can go back to AFKing at the squid farm and see how well my new shulker box storage works. And look at that. It's working completely fine, but I do just need to point these two hoppers downwards so that the shulker boxes actually go into the chests and the eggs are nicely going into here. And with that knowledge, I can grab a few extra shulker boxes to stock up this machine and get back to AFK and get this for harm. A few more days have been and gone, and as you can see, we've got a nice decent amount of ink sacks and eggs for that matter. But more importantly, I'd like to see if I can now fully stock up the chicken farm because there is a decent amount of eggs here now. And so I reckon that I should now have enough. Perfect. And it is done. 1,440 chickens are in here ready and waiting. And they're going to stock all the chests for me. And I can't really add any more chickens because the game is already getting laggy enough as it is. So adding any more would, would just end up being a disaster. And according to my calculations to get the 200,000 eggs that I need, it's going to take about 50 Minecraft days. So I might as well also be farming squid at the exact same time. So this is where I shall AFK. I'm pretty sure at this point I should have enough eggs, but we will go and find out. You can also see that I have a ridiculous amount of ink sacks here. Loads and loads in there and there. And I also moved loads and loads of shulker box up here, so uh, we're never going to need to worry about ink again. And so alongside all of the leather, I also have all of the ink. Next, I'll fly over here and let's see what we're dealing with. <laughs> we're clearly dealing with eggs. A lot of eggs. Almost all of them are done. Probably enough for what I need at the moment because these chickens will constantly be replenishing stocks as I use this next farm And so what I need to do is now light up this portal break this one on the other side and then build a new one Above the nether and what will happen with this is the machine will launch eggs through the portal And then the eggs will smash on the netherrack Sometimes spawning a baby chick and when that baby chick spawns it'll come back through the portal But instead it will connect to one that is all the way up here and to explain the rest I'm gonna have to dip home and get a few more items Including 116 cobwebs, which I, I have nowhere near enough of that's everything else I'll need and so now I just need to find some sort of mine shaft so I can collect up loads and loads of cobwebs Actually, it's probably gonna be easiest if I just head to a stronghold since the bookcase room will have lots of cobwebs Still need another stack yet, and there's none left in the entire stronghold. But I do happen to know of another place I can go. The Infinibar Tunnel. Which apparently has diamonds in it. And more importantly right now, connects to mineshafts with cobwebs. And with that, I've got them all. It's probably quicker for me to make a portal and travel home through the nether. And Operation Finish the Chicken Farm can now continue. And the reason I needed the cobwebs is because the chickens are going to fall through them. And it's going to take them 20 minutes to get from there down here. So by the time they get to the bottom, they'll be adults and I'll be able to use my looting three sword to get loads of feathers, which just makes it a bit more efficient than taking them out some other way. And then from up here, I'm just going to build a little area of water that will push the chickens to that side if they fall out the portal this way. And I'll also get trapdoors down as well as build up the rest of the portal. I'm also going to need a boat in the middle and I'm just going to throw some eggs, although I don't have any. I mean that quite loosely when I say I have no eggs because uh, <laughs> I've got quite a few. There are also some in the shulker box, so I'll just grab couple of stacks and then these baby chicks will push any other chickens that come through outwards and into the water and just to be safe I'll also put a second one on top and with that at this point the farm is now complete if I flick this lever the eggs will go through the portal and chicks will come out the other side slowly fall down and in theory I'll be able to take them out of the bottom but I, I do need to build some sort of storage system and what that will entail is a little item filter right here so that I'll only be collecting up feathers then from down here I'll build another shulker box loader Thank you. 
And it is done. Feathers will go into this shulker box. The shulker boxes will go into this chest. And the cooked chicken will go into this dropper which will then go into the lava. As you can see, the chickens are still steadily falling and I can stand here with my looting three sword and just keep swinging as the fully grown chickens land at the bottom. And I have now spent long enough taking out chickens. Most of the dispensers have run out of eggs. You can see there's the odd ones here and there, but that's because there's still chickens laying up there. So I'll switch this off and just look at this. So many feathers. Okay, that is perfect. I can drop all of these off into here and grab Lava. You see, having all these chickens at spawn does kind of make my game a little bit laggy. And now that I definitely don't need this many, I can go ahead and remove the glass and place lava inside. That just gets rid of them, then I can pick it back up, and I can go all the way along just doing this over and over again, which really will make things smoother. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to get rid of every single chicken, because I never know when I might need thousands of eggs again. But most of the chickens have been removed, just leaving one row across here. And now that I've successfully got all the feathers, leather, and ink sacks, I can begin the next phase, which is actually to go exploring. Because to set up this farm, I need to find the perfect location. And that perfect location is going to be in an ancient city. Not this ancient city. I'm just here because this is where my warden disabler is, which has now been successfully activated. No, I'm going to attempt to find an ancient city that I've never been to before. And then once in that ancient city, I need to find a very specific chest, one that contains at least two notch apples, which is kind of rare. It's just like old times, isn't it? Me hunting for notch apples in ancient cities. I think this is a good spot. So I'll dig down and see if there's anything below. Nothing this time, unfortunately, except for a bit of lava and some diamonds as well. And you know what? Whilst I'm here, I'm going to get these cobwebs because you just never know when you might need them for a farm. There's even more of them down here. They're kind of more common than I realized. This is another good spot for digging down. And this time it does lead to an ancient city. Perfect. And so now the search can begin for a chest with two notch apples in it. Well, I've managed to find a chest with one apple. However, that, that just isn't quite good enough. And this one does have two. Now, it's it's right by a shrieker. And I've got to check something. What I was seeing is if they're in different chunks. Now, they are, which is very good news. Because I can get rid of it and it is not going to cause me any trouble. But this, this is a very important chest and I'm going to dig out around it. Digging this out isn't strictly necessary, but it, it will make things easier and it, it will make it look better as well. And so that is why I'm going to do it. And with that out of the way, the area is sufficiently prepped, which means I can create a portal and then break a portal and rebuild it above the nether. It all links fine, which is good news. That is going to be very important for the farm later. But right now, I need to fly back because I have a bit of a problem. Speaking of problems, I didn't get a warden spawn before, which is, it was a bit tricky. But anyway, back, back to the point. I have a house that is already completely full of not chapels everywhere. Look, there's, there's loads over here. There's another one upstairs. Could have run out of space. And I even added loads more into this blackstone pyramid. So if I'm going to build a farm that is going to get me hundreds more not chapels, I need to build somewhere to put them. Yeah, I need to build some sort of place for them to go. And I'm thinking, what better place to do that than to build a not chapel factory right next to the bedrock one? I could have it right here so they're both opposite each other. And doing that will require me to dig out quite a decent area. Mission accomplished. I can also mine up this beacon because next the factory is going to be built right here. Building it will require many items, especially white concrete, which I've, I've got some of. But for the entire build, I'm going to need more than that. And that actually means I'm going to need more sand and gravel. So I'm going to begin by collecting that. I have some TNT. I have some gunpowder. And so I'll get my tools repaired and head out in search of a desert. And one has been found successfully. And so I'm going to get busy placing down the TNT and collecting up the sand. As you can see already, I've got a decent amount. And as you can see, the plan is working quite well. I have now run out of TNT. And once I fill this shulker box, I will have also run out of them too. And I'm hoping that means they also have enough to craft all of the needed items as well. By the way, how cool does the desert look? Very cool indeed. But anyway, my priority is now to fly back home. Then I can drop off all of the sand and travel through this massive ancient debris tunnel, collecting up all of the gravel. I really don't think there's an easier way to find gravel than going into a nether tunnel like this. And whilst I'm at it, I'll find a few misbits of ancient debris as well. Look at this, two pieces hiding under here. And I've also successfully filled up the first shulker box. And at this point, I'm happy with all the gravel that I've got because at my bartering farm, I've also got a decent amount of it. I'm optimistic that this should just about all be enough. And whilst I'm here, I do also need a shulker box worth of gold blocks. So I'll AFK here and let the gold farm do its stuff. I know that I didn't get the full amount of gold that I said I would, but I think for now I've got enough because down in my chest room, I do have quite a few more. Next, I can start crafting all the needed concrete. And there's also lots of other items that I'm going to need that I'm going to get busy gathering up and, and not bore you with all the details. And as I put these into the shulker box, I've got every single item I need 
Except for all the gold blocks, I'm not sure if I have enough or not. But I guess time will tell later on. So to begin, I'm going to build a massive outline of the entire thing that's going to be in a big square. And with that all down, I'm just going to pop home to grab a load of grass blocks. And then I'm going to connect up this terrain so that the whole building is sat on flat ground. And that does also mean that the river will kind of need to be terraformed out so it just kind of stops here. Although an underwater tunnel could be cool sometime to add. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that today. Right now, the priority is, to, is just to make it look kind of natural. So from here, yeah, that, that does work quite well. And then I also need to fill in all of this. And at the other side, I think I'm just going to fill in this entire thing so it's all flat. And as you can see, it makes a nice connection between the terrain. Next, I'm going to dig out the entire floor and replace it with the correct blocks. It is starting to come together. You can kind of see the areas being marked out. All of this is now just going to be polished deep slate in between the yellow and black markings, which I, th I think are very factory-esque. I think I have the same ones in this factory as well. Yep, there you go. They're all along the... Although, <laughs> water spilled on top of some of them. I should probably fix that eventually. At least with these ones being made of wool, I won't be having that problem. I'm also going to put five anvils along here at the entrance, just as a cool little extra floor. And I can now start to build up the walls even more. It's starting to become a decent size. I thought I'd just show you the progress. You can see how it's, it's beginning to take shape a little bit. I'll also make it so that these pipes go all the way up to connect. I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, something like that and, and that one there can go even higher. And on the inside, this is how it's starting to look. We're going to have these like gold tubes everywhere that make it look kind of industrial. We also need to get rid of this snow. That's <laughs> it's always a problem, isn't it, in building in this biome. And these blocks over here, you might think they're gold blocks, but no, they're honey blocks. And they're going to have enchanted golden apples falling down them in like a waterfall. Kind of like I have with my bedrock fall. And another thing that's going to be quite pretty prevalent on the interior is these tubes of yellow ooze. I don't know if ooze is the right word, some sort of liquid like chemical. You'll see what I mean, they're just going to be like connected all around to make it look like it's been pumped all over the factory. And this is how the pipes look so far. Now, oh, it's starting to look really, really good. But before I can really bring them much higher, I, I now need to continue building up some walls. And there's also going to be a bit of an interior corridor up here, so this is why I need this diorite floor. And right now, I'm building the beginning of the second floor. It's starting to look pretty good from the outside. And up here, it's going to be a bit of a balcony where you can look down over the whole thing. And the way you get to the top is by going up these stairs. You can see these. Look at this. We've got a nice little corridor and area to look out. You can go down these stairs all the way to the bottom of the factory. It's looking very good indeed. But... There needs to be more up there. Up at the top here, there's going to be a bit of a glass pane railing all the way around that just goes between the concrete. And it's also going to go around the outside as well. Now, right here is where the Notch Apple waterfall is going to be. And there's going to be another one over here. And because as I build this up, I'm going to be putting roofs over this and everything. I want to get the redstone in and get it all down so that I then don't really have to worry about it later. These signs are in place because they are going to stop this water from flowing all the way down. And these pistons here are ultimately what turn the machine on and off, which is which is why they're kind of important and why I'm doing them first. The droppers then go on top. The good thing is anything I build in one place, I can build it in all of the other places because it's just all symmetrical. And right here is going to be where the lever is that controls everything. So I'm going to go underneath and start adding the redstone down. Although getting in there might be a bit of a challenge. Actually, maybe not. I just, just glide in like that. Okay, no problem at all. And to transport the signal upwards, I've got all these torches, which fit just nicely between the gaps. So we'll bring that all the way up to the top. Then I can run a bit of redstone above it, attach the repeaters, and as you can see, this now extends the pistons. And that's all there is to it for the redstone side of things, but I do need to sort out the collection system at the bottom, which first involves blue ice that goes round here to this block, and then I also need to fully enclose it in, like so, and I need something else. Soul sand, because that is what is going to make the water shoot. And I'll also get a sign right here. So the thing I'm missing is water. There is also a gap there which shouldn't be. I'm going to have to fix that. And the best way I can think to do that is to gracefully float down, land inside it, place a block there. There we go. Look at that. Brilliant. Absolutely perfect. And what I've just built here also needs to be built on the other side of these honey blocks. And also on this side as well. And now in order to sort the water, I'm going to quickly pop back home to grab some kelp, bone meal, and water. This bit's pretty simple. I book it right there. You can see where it's going to flow to into a hopper, which is, yeah, just under there. And bone meal in the kelp will do the rest. And I'd also better put a gold block on top because I don't want that water to freeze. That would, uh, that would not be good. And I'll now repeat the whole process three more times. Perfect, that's all done. And the machine is, is ready. You can see it's kind of doing stuff, but that's because there's kelp in there. We don't want it to be doing it with kelp, do we? And there does also need to be a little on-off switch here, which I'll just use a lever for. So if I now flick that, 
it will turn the machine on because the pistons up there will have retracted. I'm just going to lay things up a little bit more up here so that no items can escape. And I think purely for demonstration purposes, I should chuck a stack of yellow concrete into each one. Obviously, I have to build the farm for it to be filled with not chapels. I don't have enough yet, so that's, that's why I'm using concrete. Everything is loaded up. These should also be in subtraction mode. I don't know why they're not. And there should be a bit of redstone dust there. Okay, perfect. Now you can see it's pulsing. That's exactly what should happen. And then I simply come down here, flick this lever. And before you know it, I have my yellow concrete waterfall. It looks way more impressive when it's not chapels, but, but for now this will do. Because at the very least, I know the machine works. Let's turn it back off. And before I continue, I'm kind of worried that I'm going to run out of gold. I've got 25 there and then three stacks in the shulker box. I don't think it will be enough. So a gold collection spree is going to be on the cards. Could just steal it from that mountain or, or that big palace. No, no, we need to get fresh gold. I can't keep taking it from other places. And for a start, I do know that my old gold farm generates it quite a bit and, and I've been using it every now and again. So will there be any in here? Okay, there's a little bit. And a few ingots, better than nothing. Okay, I guess that's all we're getting. And of course, I can also get plenty more at the good old gold farm. I've got an extra few stacks, which I'm pretty confident should work out to be enough. So I'll take it back with me. Then I can grab back all of my items and get the entire exterior of this factory finished. And that is the entire exterior complete. And I have to say, it's looking pretty good. There's some snow around. I'm just going to get rid of all that. It's kind of annoying. And now I can do the last little bits of the interior because each of these four rooms is going to have something different in them. This first one's going to have a conveyor belt that's carrying gold blocks. So this is just going to be the frame. And then here there'll be iron trap doors all the way along. And then some carpets on top. This is where the gold blocks that are getting pushed along are going to be. And I think if I can just grab some wool, I can put it in here. Just as the finishing touch. So yeah, you can see... Oh, I've got a shulker box in the way. But you can see, yeah, it's just a nice little conveyor belt. Apparently, I, I forgot to do that bit of the roof in here. So I'll make sure to get it all patched up with white concrete. I should just realise that I forgot to do the ceilings of, of all these rooms. So let's just do it for all of them. Because having these is a, it's a pretty important part. Now, in this room, I'm going to be placing some oak logs. And then a bunch of gold blocks. Because inside a Notch Apple factory... You've got to have trees that are made of gold. And I had the exact right amount of blocks. That's, that's just perfect. Also, in all these gaps, we're going to have double chests. So those there and these here. In here, I'm going to have a bit of a lab machine that forges the gold. But I've run out of gold blocks now. So I, I didn't have the exact right amount at all. So I'm just going to temporarily steal them from the gold mountain. No, no, we need to get fresh gold. I can't keep taking it from other places. So it's going to look something like this. But then with lava inside, I'm going to put some concrete there so it doesn't flow everywhere. And there you have it. Just as exciting as you were hoping for. And in here, I'm going to have a machine that involves item frames. And item frames are something that I need a lot of that I, I completely forgot about. Thankfully, I'm, I'm not really in short supply of them. I also need one or two other little items, such as an apple, a golden apple, an XP bottle, and also a notch apple. Yeah, we have we have a few spare ones there, don't we? And then I'm going to have four item frames along here. And it's going to kind of show the progression. You know, a normal apple becomes a golden apple. Add a bit of XP, you get a notch apple. I think it looks kind of cool. And this entire building is just going to get covered with... Wait, why is there snow there? It's going to get covered with item frames, which will have notch apples in. I just need to get all those notch apples to fill it. We're also going to have a lot right here and more on the other side. Above every chest, I'm going to add two. And finally, a massive grid of them on this wall, although I, I, I need a few more. There we go. And other than fill all these up, the only thing left to do is to put a massive notch apple on the front, you know, so we know what the factory is. The bedrock factory has a piece of bedrock, so it definitely makes sense. And right here is where it's going to be. And there we have it. I think it looks pretty good. Looks like a notch apple anyway, which is the main thing. And now the phase of building the factory is complete and it is time to build the farm so I can fill it up. And this entire farm is going to use a method known as chunk regening. It's a bit like chunk safe stating that I use for my bedrock farm, but it's a bit more complicated and a lot more broken. And this is why I needed so much leather, so much ink, and so many feathers, because we need to completely overload Minecraft's memory. And if I want to make a farm of it, I'm going to have to overload it loads and loads of times. So, let's go and start making the first book. And this book is then going to get turned into a book and quill. And in this, I'm going to paste loads of complex characters that will take up a lot of memory. Each page is going to be different and completely random. And by the time I'm done, this is a book that will take up a lot more memory than the average book. And that is all 100 pages done. I'll call it book one and sign it. And then I'm going to use these book and quills to duplicate it over and over again. And now I have to do this. So in total, I have this for 27 different types of books. But I've realized something. I've remembered to get all the leather. I've remembered to get all the ink. I've remembered to get all of the feathers. 
but I forgot to get all the paper. I need a lot of sugarcane. You can see we've, we've got a few sugar boxes, but we need so, so much more. So here is my master plan. I'm going to take all of these materials and head to spawn. And from here, I'm going to get the old sugarcane farm going again. And so whilst I'm busy working away writing these books, the sugarcane will be growing and being harvested for me. And there we have it. 27 books, all completely different. 2,700 pages pasted. Yeah, it took a few hours to do that. A bit longer than I expected. However, I didn't really get much sugarcane in that time because every time you open a book to write in it, the game pauses. So <laughs> there wasn't really anything happening. So yeah, I I'm going to have to come with a new plan. And that new plan is to get all the books a different way without crafting them from sugarcane. You see, when I spent hours and hours researching this entire thing, I for some reason thought that you craft a book and quill with leather, ink, and a feather. Which is why I never even thought about getting the sugarcane and why I got all the leather. However, with this newfound knowledge, I have a new plan. You see, there are librarian villagers that will give you bookcases for emeralds. This one won't, but I'm sure I can find one that will. Yep, first try, nine emeralds for one bookcase. And so now I shall get busy using the Void Trader to buy as many as I can. And that is enough of the trading. I used to get a decent amount of books from it. You can see I've got all these as well. And I'll gradually turn them back into books as I craft the book and quills. And with that said, I've got an entire shulker box of book one. But I need an entire shulker box of every single one in here. And so I shall get busy crafting every single one of them. And that is the final shulker box. And I didn't do just one chest worth of all these shulker boxes. I didn't just do two. No, I did three because the more I do the more not chapel I'll get. And I still have a decent amount of leather, ink, feathers, but I've completely run out of paper. I've run out of books. So that's kind of the thing that's, that stopped me from doing even more. And for now, all of this will do. I'm, I'm not going to complain about that. And the machine that I'm going to use alongside these books is, is not actually that big. So I'm just going to grab a few blocks. I'll just grab 64. That's fine. I'm going to need hoppers. That's going to be the main thing I need. Two stacks will do me, but we don't have that. So I'm going to have to dip into here. In fact, we don't have that many chests either, which is, is not good because I will need quite a lot of chests as well. But I guess I can worry about that later. That's all the hoppers. And everything else that I need, I already have. So I just have to grab it from the chests. This right here is everything except for all the chests and shulker shells. I'll leave all the books behind and come back for them later because I, I can't really carry everything. I've only got so much inventory space. Here's the nether portal. And here is the ancient city. Now, first things first, because we are going to be regenerating the chunk, sometimes... Skulk Shriekers will appear. And I don't want any Warden spawning which will ruin this, so that is why I'm gonna make a wool bridge. I can't really, there's no point in me doing anything here. Like, I, I can place some wool here, you know, I can I can do whatever to this chunk, but it's not gonna last because the chunk will regen and, and delete it all. And I need to make sure that I build this machine far enough away from the portal. So I'm gonna build it 10 chunks in this direction. And this right here shall be the spot. The redstone's fairly simple, so I'll explain how it works when it's done. And up here are all the droppers that are gonna contain the books. Now to add a load of hoppers on top, and it is done. That was pretty quick, wasn't it? And what this will do is each dropper will be full of each type of book. So book one will be here, book two will be here, book three will be here, and it will, when I press this button, each dropper will dispense one item into this shulker box. This shulker box will fill up and then go into this chest and it'll have one of each book all in different stacks. In fact, it's probably just better if I show you it in action. And so this is the moment where I need to transport all the books. Fantastic, that is all of them. I'll load the chests up with loads and loads and loads of shulker boxes. And let's say I want to fill nine shulker boxes, each having one different book in them. Well, I just put nine items into here, push this, and then it goes around. And as you can see, these have all now, well, they've all gone off. There is books. Well, trust me, it worked. I, it was too quick for me to show you. But if you look at here now, these are all different types of books. Look at it. One of every book, they're not in any specific order, are in there. And then it's happened again. And in the exact same thing, one of every book is in there. And any moment now, it'll do it again. And every single one of every book is in there. And that will happen for as many times as there is items in this dropper. Very, very simple. But you're probably wondering why. Why do I need this? Why do I need to split the books up like that instead of having them in shulker boxes <laughs> like this? Well, it's all about how a computer processes data. And here we are in a random creative world. Right here, we have loads and loads of books, but they're all exactly the same book over and over again, they stack up. And here we have less books, but they're all different. So they don't stack up. So there's a lot less of them but they're all different. Now, because these are all the same, Minecraft can compress them so they take up less memory. And because these are all different, Minecraft can't really compress them because there's, there's nothing to merge together. And this is where chunk regening comes in. If you make a chunk run out of memory, it will regenerate it back to as if it was brand new. For example, if I make this chunk 
completely full of diamond blocks. And I can quit the game, save it. And when I load it back in, it's still there. This is this is part of the game now. This is what the chunk is, okay? It, it is it is exactly like this. I can even break blocks as well if I want to. But if I now put a load of high data shulker boxes into a chest in the chunk, then it will require a lot more memory to process it. And you can see the memory that's used in the top right corner. And if I go into the launcher and make it so Minecraft can only use a thousand megabytes, when the game loads in the chunk with the shulker boxes, it runs out of memory and you get this out of memory error. And then if you unload the chunk by going through another portal, that's the easiest way to do it. Minecraft sees it as an unreadable chunk and regenerates it back to how it would be in a brand new Minecraft world. And if you do this in a structure, Minecraft will regenerate the loot. So let's uh, let's put it into practice. First things first, I need to get rid of these chickens because they're causing a bit of lag that might affect things or might make my game crash while I'm doing this, which I'd like to avoid if possible. Next, I need another 26 shulker boxes worth. So I've put that many items in and they can nicely be processed in a way. The only items I'll have in my inventory is the chest and then all of the shulker boxes. That's all of them done. And I've also set the render distance to two because once I lower the RAM, if I load this machine, it'll just regenerate all the chunks because there's a lot of data there. And I definitely don't want that to happen. So now I head through the portal. As you can see, there's no not chapels in there. There's just a bunch of loot. I'm going to put down a chest and then I'm going to close the game. Then I'll reload the game with just a thousand megabytes of RAM. And I'm going to fill this chest up with all of these. And you can see in the top right, it's using about 90% of the memory. Once I go through this portal, the memory spiked up to 98%. The game is pretty much out of memory. It, it will have had the error. And so because that chunk's become unreadable, when I head back through, it should regenerate the chunk. It'll take a little bit to load. Now I know it's worked because it's taken quite a bit to load the chunk. And here we go. It's loaded in and it it's worked. You can see it's actually changed the look of it as well a little bit because it's, uh, it's regenerated. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this shrieker. I, I hope there's no others lurking around because we don't want any ones as I've, uh, as I've said. And then two notch apples. Yes, we can put those into the ender chest. We can put another double chest down and go and get more shulker boxes because the shulker boxes have been deleted. And that is why we needed so many books. I've also increased Minecraft memory back up before going over here. I can shove that in there, get it to run 35 times and just rinse and repeat. We can keep doing this over and over again. So I'll quit Minecraft and give it less memory. Put the books in the chest. Heads through the portal and it's just rinse and repeat. It once again the chunks regen. We've got the notch apples, it looks different at another time. So yeah, it, it, it works absolutely perfectly. And I'm just gonna keep doing this over and over again until I completely run out of books, which will get me a decent amount of notch apples. And this is the last lot of books that I have. So I'll regen the chunk one more time. And from doing it over and over again, I've ended up with a grand total of 76 notch apples. Not a bad little haul, especially when I put them with the other 33 I had in the sugar box. We've got absolutely loads. And if I was to get loads more sugarcane, I could use the farm a lot more and get hundreds more of the notch apples, which is good to know that that's, that's an option. You can see I've got a few of these left because I, I, I didn't have a use for all of them. Not quite enough for one more batch. I can now fill up all of these item frames with the notch apples and also fill the droppers so that I have working and notch apple waterfalls. Doesn't it look cool? I'm very, very pleased with it. In fact, I'm pleased with the entire factory, the farm and the entire video. And if you'd like to watch me build a farm to get all of this bedrock, then click the video that's on screen right now. Or if you'd like to see me build this massive netherite farm, then click the other video that is now on screen.